In order to do any type of security online, you need mutual secret keys on both sides of the wire. And the only way to do that is to first do a key exchange. Let's talk about it. Hello, welcome to another video in my Cryptography Essentials series. In this video, we're going to be looking at key exchanges. Now, to really understand key exchange, we have to understand the problem that a key exchange is trying to solve. So I want to start there. Let's say we have this green user and this blue user that want to speak securely to each other across the internet. Well, in order to speak securely, we need two things. First, we need confidentiality. This ensures that whatever is sent is only readable by these two users. And second, we need integrity. This ensures that whatever is sent cannot be changed or modified in transit on the wire. We can get confidentiality by using symmetric encryption, and this is going to require a secret key. And we can get integrity by using a message authentication code, and this will also require a secret key. But the issue is how do we get these secret keys across the wire to the other side? We can't just send them across the internet, because anybody listening in will then get a copy of those keys and will therefore be able to intercept and read or even change anything sent on the wire. That is what is known as the key exchange problem, and let me show you how we get around it. A key exchange allows these two users to establish a shared secret over an unsecured medium, like the internet. The key exchange itself will have both of these users exchanging certain pieces of information with each other, and the result of that will be what's known as a shared secret. The shared secret is just a string of ones and zeros known only by the intended parties, and that shared secret will be used as the seed value from which to generate as many symmetric secret keys as we need. The cool thing about this is you can generate as many symmetric secret keys as you want. Remember earlier in the series we talked about a PRF, or a pseudo-random function. What you can do is feed that shared secret into the pseudo-random function to generate as many symmetric secret keys as you want. Meaning you could have one set of keys that protect the data going this direction, and another set of keys that protects the data this direction and potentially a third set of keys that protects the control traffic between these two users to ensure they're using the right keys. However you want to organize your secure communication protocol, you can use one key exchange which generates one shared secret to generate as many symmetric secret keys as you want. Now of course, the real magic of a key exchange is understanding what exactly is exchanged to perform the key exchange and how it allows these two parties to establish the same seed value without anybody else in the middle to establish the same one. And we'll be looking at two ways to do that in the next two lessons in the series. But for now, I just want to make sure you understand the high-level goal of what a key exchange is trying to accomplish, and that is to establish this shared secret over an unsecured medium. Now, even though I told you that a shared secret is just a string of ones and zeros, it's not the same thing as a secret key. I did tell you earlier in the series that a secret key is also just a string of ones and zeros, so technically you could say that they are both the same thing, but they are different in what their purposes are. A shared secret is meant to be used as a seed value to generate additional symmetric secret keys, and then the secret keys themselves will be used to actually protect the data. That is how those two concepts are different. Okay, so that's the idea behind a key exchange and the background you need to know before getting into the next two lessons. In the next two lessons, we'll be looking at the actual math that goes into the key exchange process itself. And there are two algorithms that you can use to do a key exchange, RSA and Diffie-Hellman. And we'll be looking at both of them in the next two lessons. But that's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.